Okay, so Karen, we just finished collecting the water sample from the lake, and as we were coming off the water, we noticed that there was an algae bloom along the western shoreline of the lake. Um, so this gives us an opportunity to collect an algae bloom sample. Um, so I'm going to take you through the procedures for collecting an algae bloom sample uh, and for filling out the paperwork. Um, so the first step in the process is to make sure that you are being as safe as possible when you're collecting that sample. So we've provided you with vinyl gloves. They're in the sampling kit that was provided to all the CSLAP volunteers. So you'll start by putting on the vinyl gloves. Um, and uh, after you put the vinyl gloves on, you'll take the algae bloom bottle out. Um, so you'll notice the algae bloom bottle has a red label on it. Um, and the label uh, indicates the name of the lake and the fact that this is an algae bloom sample. And we'll go through the information on the label in a few minutes. So, so the next step in the process is identifying where and how to collect an algae bloom sample. So you'll want to collect a sample from the most intensive part of the bloom in a location where you're not compromising any safety. So right here, right along the shoreline, we have a good location to collect an algae bloom sample. Um, so um, what you'll do is um, reach into the water there um, and skim this bottle over um, across the surface of the water, trying to get uh, as much of the algae sample as you can, but also um, getting a fair amount of water so that it's a sample that can be easily analyzed. Um, so exactly as you're doing there, you'll skim that sample. Do I want to fill the bottle up? Yep, you'll fill up as much of the bottle as you can. If possible, fill it up to the shoulder. Okay, and if you need to um, bring the bottle, uh, drop the bottle a little deeper into the water to get a little bit more water, you can do that too. Good. So you'll place the cap on it, um, and then we'll fill out the paperwork. Um, so the paperwork uh, is also with the materials that were provided in each of the sampling kits. Um, and there you'll be filling out the harmful algae bloom sample data sheet. Um, each time you collect a water sample, we want you to fill out this form, even if you're not collecting an algae bloom sample. But obviously this time you've collected a sample. Um, so the way you fill out the form is you take the sample ID number from the label, which here says 14-999-B1, and the B refers to a bloom sample, and you'll put that in the sample ID number line. Then you'll list the date and your sample name, sampler name, and then the description of the bloom. There's lots of different kinds of algae blooms. Um, when you look down here, you'll see that there's a mix of a couple different algae types. Um, you have what appears to be green dots in the water. There also seems to be some streaks um, running um, parallel to the shoreline. Um, and um, in this most intensive part of the bloom, it looks like somebody spilled some green paint. Those are three of the choices that we have available. Spilled paint appearance on the surface is A. Pea soup appearance within the water, which we're not seeing here, is B. Streaks, usually green on the water surface, is C. Green dots or clumps on the water is D. Um, we also have a couple of other categories here for non-blue-green samples. Bubbling scums on the lake surface is E. Green, slight, slight greenish or brownish tint to the water is F. Duckweed or water meal, which is a floating aquatic plant, is G. Um, H is other, and I is no evidence of bloom. So uh, you'll circle each one of these choices, each one of these letters that corresponds to what you're seeing here. So we're seeing spill paint, A, streaks, C, and green dots, D. So you'll circle all of those. Um, then you'll also tell us how extensive the bloom is, and we give you three choices. Um, the first choice is small localized, um, an area that covers just a few properties along the shoreline. The second choice is large localized, which covers many properties. And the third choice is widespread or lake-wide. And if you look down the shoreline here, you'll see that this bloom extends for much of the western shoreline of the lake, but nowhere else on the lake. So we would describe that as large localized. Then the last step you'll do is to uh, take the map of the lake and sketch out everywhere where you're seeing the bloom occur. Uh, and then mark the letters that correspond to the type of bloom that you're seeing. So places where you see green dots, you'll mark D on the map. Places where you're seeing green streaks, you'll mark C on the map. Places where you're seeing spilled paint, you'll mark A. Finally, you'll want to place an X on the location where you actually collected the bloom sample. And here, we're placing an X on the southwestern shoreline of the lake, corresponding to this location right here. Um, then you'll dispose of the gloves, and you'll take that um, this algae bloom bottle, put it in the small cooler for SUNY ESF, um, 
add this sheet that you've just filled out and send that off to the laboratory. So thanks for collecting the sample.